Okay, today we're going to talk about the ballasting system on board ships. The safety hazards involved with this would be the normal ones involved with uh, going in the machinery space as well as walking out on deck. Uh, right now we're in the cargo control room. Okay, uh, ships that use ballast systems uh, normally use these systems routinely and regularly during all cargo operations. As a matter of fact, it's likely that sometimes you'll actually go on board the vessel in the middle of a ballasting operation. Keeping that in mind, we normally don't need to have the crew test the ballast system for us to verify it operates. Uh, you know, like you would with a bilge ballast system that is rarely used and therefore they must demonstrate it to us. The ballast system is a piece of continually used machinery. Here is the ship's stability book. Ballast operations and cargo operations are extremely interrelated. Uh, what goes along with this is the loading computer. Uh, we have an example of it up on the screen right now. This is a class approved piece of software that would be referenced on the certificate of fitness. The chief mate would use this software to plan and calculate every aspect of his cargo operation. As we know, as cargo goes on, ballast goes off and vice versa. So there's always continuously both uh, things happening all the time. This computer ensures that he ballasts the right tank based on the tanks that the cargo is coming out of. If they do it wrong, they can impart shear stresses within the cargo envelope that are very undesirable and eventually could lead to casualties. Okay, now we're going to look at the uh, ballast pumps in a 30,000 ton gas ship. Here we have uh, ballast pump number one. It's this green motor with the gauges going down below. We also have number two ballast pump so that we have duplication of vital machinery when you're looking at these we're looking at the machinery guard for the rotating equipment the seal to the pump down here we're looking for evidence that it's intact i don't see any water or oil building up down here so the pump looks to be in good general condition okay on this ship we don't have a traditional ballast water manifold, so to speak. What we have is in the general area of the pumps themselves is all this piping arrangement with all the different actuated valves. Together, these make up the ballast manifold. Later, we will uh, see the computer control system. It pipes it out a, a whole lot easier. But generally, when it's arranged like this, almost all of the pipes you see here can have ballast water going in either direction depending on the actuated valve arrangement. We're either sucking ballast water from the sea and sending it to the treatment system and therefore onto the ballast tanks, or it could all be reversed and we could be taking suction from the ballast tanks, again running it through the ballast treatment system and discharging to the sea. The direction of flow is all controlled by how we arrange these valves. Okay, let's talk about the remote actuated valves. All the valves in the components of the system, they have to be uniquely marked so that they can be properly identified. As you can see, this one is 422-1-15-12-13. That way, uh, at the remote control location, it has to match with what valve he's wanting to open. Another unique thing about these actuators is locally where we are, you have to be able to look at them and tell if they are open or closed right now. So this type has a, an indicator here. 
that shows whether it's state of the flapper inside or a different kind of indicator would be this one. As you can see, red is closed right now. But all remote actuated valves have to have that indicator for open or closed. Okay, valve 4221-15 was controlled from here. So if we look at the screen closer, you can see the, that this red valve here is the one that corresponds with the one we closed earlier. Uh, the green shows the ballast piping system and the state of the valves are either red or green. It is red now because it is closed. I'm sure that this uh, red indicator turned green when we opened the valve earlier. But again, this just reestablishes the importance of making sure all the valves are properly marked and identified since they are being controlled remotely. Okay, now for the ballast water treatment system. When you align the valves to uh, the right way, the ballast water will go to this treatment unit uh, first for treatment. Behind us is the control panel that controls this treatment unit. Now this ballast water treatment system is Coast Guard approved on this vessel. But this system was installed before the Coast Guard approval came through. So we have looked, but we cannot find the Coast Guard approval number posted on either of these control units. So what we are going to do is later look for the paperwork and inform the crew that they also need to post that Coast Guard approval number down here on the units. Okay, let's summarize uh, ballast systems. Today we spoke about the hazards of the ballast system and inspecting it. We talked about the different methods of compliance with the ballast water convention. We looked at the pumps and the motors that turn them and the machinery guards that protect the rotating parts. <clears throat> we saw all the remote actuated valves in the system and verified that the status indicators as well as the marking and identification of the valves was in place. We saw the ballast control station up in the cargo control room and the ballast control computer with which we controlled the remote operated valves. And we covered a lot on ballast systems, so if you have any questions, contact the verifying officer at your unit.